Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about epistasis. Now the word epistasis means to stop. And what exactly happens in epistasis is one gene would affect or will not allow the expression of another gene. Say for example, I have gene A and B. So gene A will not allow the expression of gene B. Gene A would hide or mask the effect of gene B. That phenomena is called epistasis. Now this will become much more clear as we go on. And before we go ahead, actually we should be clear with two terms. And those are epistatic gene and hypostatic gene. These are the two words we should be clear. The epistatic genes are the genes that are hiding the effect of other gene. As I said, one gene is masking the uh, effect of another gene. So the gene that is doing this masking part is called the epistatic. And you can remember it this way. Epi means above. So this is a gene that is above the another gene, epistatic gene and the gene that is getting masked or which is not allowed to express that gene is called hypostatic gene the meaning of hypo is uh, under that means it is under the effect of epistatic gene you can remember it this way very easy to understand epistatic gene is the gene that would mask the other gene and hypostatic gene is the gene that is getting masked which is not allowed to express so there are two main types of epistasis that we are going to talk about that is dominant epistasis and recessive epistasis so let's start with recessive epistasis first Okay, so to understand the uh, recessive epistasis, we'll take example of pigmentation in Labradors. Now, as I said, we are talking about epistasis means one gene is affecting another gene. So we will have hypostatic gene and we will have epistatic gene. So let's assume that the pigmentation in Labrador is uh, coded by gene B. So what all different combinations can we have over here? For example, the dominant allele B codes for black and the recessive allele B, small b, codes for brown. So what all possible combinations can be there? Either we can have homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant. In either of the case, it is going to give us the black pigmentation or we can have the homozygous recessive condition in that case we should have brown color pigmentation that is what happens normally now there is also a presence of epistatic gene say for example gene E is epistatic now we are talking about recessive epistasis when we say recessive epistasis simple to understand that means this epistatic gene is epistatic only if it is present in recessive state that means only when it is in homozygous recessive condition it will act as epistatic gene and it will not allow the hypostatic gene to express doesn't matter what our hypostatic gene is even if both the dominant alleles are present it is homozygous dominant if the epistatic gene is there in recessive state it is not going to allow the hypostatic gene to express okay now again as I said you know uh, gene E is epistatic gene but there can be combinations it can be either uh, present in uh, homozygous dominant heterozygous dominant if it is an homozygous or heterozygous dominant there is going to be no problem at all because we are talking about recessive epistasis this is a gene which is epistatic only when it is present in homozygous recessive form. Well, let's go on and take an example that will become much more clear. So we'll have Labrador with black pigmentation and no pigmentation and for no pigmentation rather than saying no pigmentation we would say golden pigmentation. Okay, There is no pigmentation as in there is no black or brown pigment. So it's a golden color Labrador. So when we cross them this is what we are going to get. Let's not talk about genotype here let's talk from FN generation so in FN generation we have got black pigmentation with a genotype capital B small b capital E small e there is no problem because this epistatic gene E over here is in dominant state it has to be recessive condition in order to block the expression of hypostatic gene so, so as of now we are getting black pigmentation in FN generation now, now in FN generation let's cross these types and see what we are getting so first we have to see what gametes we get we will get combination of capital B capital E capital B small E 
small b capital e and small b small e okay now it is always recommended that you draw the pinet square it might look little tedious work but this makes it very easy to understand and there will be absolutely no confusion so i recommend you go ahead and draw the pinet square put all the gametes on both the side and write down what you are getting now when you are working in your book in exam you are not allowed the colors but you can just write in the corner what a uh, phenotype it might be you know that way you don't get confused so let's look at the uh, outcome over here see uh, let's make it easy to understand you know this table we are talking about recessive epistasis right so we are concerned with our epistatic gene being in recessive condition so let's first locate wherever our epistatic gene is in recessive condition so if you look in the table here double e our epistatic gene is in recessive condition next over here over here and over here right so wherever you are seeing that the epistatic gene is in recessive condition we are not getting either black or brown pigmentation they are all golden color pigmentation all right that is because even though you know we have the dominant copy of gene b because it is an epistatic gene this is going to mask the effect of this dominant gene it will not allow this gene b to express whereas if you see over here you know wherever the dominant b is present you will get black color pigmentation okay the moment you have a uh, homozygous recessive condition for gene b we will get brown color pigmentation so by looking at this table we can understand that the gene e in recessive condition acts as epistatic gene and it will hide the effect of gene b even though you know it is in dominant condition it will not allow the expression of gene b so the ratio which is very important you know we look for f2 ratio always in case of recessive epistasis if you see over here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 nine black pigmented 1 2 3 3 brown pigmented and 4 4 golden pigmented labrador will be there so the f2 ratio very important is going to be 9 is to 3 is to 4 so recessive epistasis remember your epistatic gene as the term says recessive should be in homozygous recessive condition in order to mask the effect of another gene doesn't matter your hypostatic gene is in what configuration it cannot get expressed if the epistatic gene is in recessive condition if it is in uh, homozygous or heterozygous dominant condition there is not going to be any problem so now let's move on and see the dominant epistasis okay so to understand dominant epistasis we will talk about the pigmentation in in squash fruit okay. so let's assume that the fruit color is controlled by gene a so we'll have either dominant gene a or recessive gene a if it is dominant it codes for yellow color and if it is in recessive condition homozygous recessive it will code for green color so what all possible combination we can have we can have a homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant coding for yellow color or homozygous recessive giving us the green pigmentation of this is the normal condition since we are talking about epistasis we will have an epistatic gene over here let's assume it's gene b that is epistatic and we are talking about dominant epistasis the word itself says that whenever the epistatic gene is in dominant condition it is going to mask the effect of hypostatic gene so again for gene b what are possible combinations can we have we can either have homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant or we can have homozygous recessive since we are talking about dominant epistasis when we have homozygous recessive we are not going to be worried because it is not going to do any problem to our hypostatic gene but if it is found in homozygous or heterozygous condition it is going to mask the effect of gene a it will not allow the expression of gene a because it is dominant epistasis so let's take an example and see let's take two fruit and uh, cross them white color and green color and we get fn generation that is white in color with uh this genotype okay Le now let's talk from the fn generation in fn generation we have white fruit having the genotype of capital a small a capital b small b now look at this this is white color fruit okay even though i have capital a over here ideally that should code for yellow right 
but look at my epistatic gene gene b is in dominant condition it is heterozygous dominant so it will not allow this color to be expressed so all my fruits are going to be white in color so when we uh, self fertilize the f1 generation what we get over here is let's look at the gametes first we'll have capital a capital b capital a small b small a capital b and small a small b let's make up in a square and in the f1 generation this is what we are going to get now again you know since we are talking about dominant epistasis let's locate wherever we have our epistatic gene in dominant condition so gene b is epistatic gene look at this dominant 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 here also this one also so wherever it is in homozygous or heterozygous dominant condition it is white in color right because it will not allow this gene a to express doesn't matter even if it is in uh, homozygous dominant form but wherever you see the epistatic gene in recessive condition there the pigments are expressed and that expression would depend on what type of genotype this gene a has so for example all these three would have yellow color pigmentation because a is their dominant a in case of this particular box you can see small a small a in recessive condition it gives the green color fruit so gene b over here in this condition acts as epistatic gene in dominant condition and it blocks the expression of gene a that's what is dominant epistasis it's very easy to understand so if you look at the f2 ratio of this you will see 12 is to 3 is to 1 12 white color pigmented fruit three yellow color and one green color fruit very important 12 is 2 3 is 2 and that is what we will get sometimes you know what happens in exam they'll give you this ratio and this table and will ask you to work out what type of epistasis you are dealing with looking at the ratio also you can actually understand what type of epistasis they are talking about so what happens in case of recessive epistasis epistatic gene has to be in homozygous recessive condition then no matter what genotype hypostatic gene would have it is going to mask it in case of dominant epistasis the epistatic gene should be in dominant condition either heterozygous or homozygous dominant in that case it will mask the effect of hypostatic gene so that, that's all about uh, recessive and dominant epistasis now when we are talking about epistasis i also want to talk about uh, one more type which is called the duplicate recessive epistasis or also known as complementary interaction okay it's also very interesting uh, type that we can talk about where what happens is sometimes the effect or the phenotype that we are observing is a result of more than one genes interacting okay the pigmentation of flower say for example can be a result of more than one gene that are involved to produce that pigmentation say for example you have a precursor uh, colorless precursor that is converted into next compound which is also a colorless uh, compound and that finally that compound can be converted into the pigment that we observe in this case what happens say for example gene a codes for enzyme a that can convert precursor 1 to precursor 2 and gene B codes for enzyme B that converts precursor 2 to purple pigment if you don't have gene B say for example okay if you don't have gene B even though you have gene A you will have precursor 2 produced but pigment cannot be produced because there is nothing over here which can convert this precursor into pigment similarly if you don't have gene A what will happen even though you have gene B it doesn't have the precursor which it needs to convert into purple pigment because this precursor 1 cannot be converted into precursor 2 so both these genes are very much needed in order to have the uh, pigment in the flower at least one dominant copy of each gene is required to have the phenotype now what happens in case of duplicate recessive epistasis so for example again these two genes can exist in either of these conditions either they are homozygous or heterozygous uh, dominant or they can exist as homozygous recessive if you have both the genes in homozygous or heterozygous uh, dominant condition there will be no problem you know at least you will have one functional copy of each gene to have the pigmentation but if any one of them 
would be in homozygous recessive condition you will not have the pigmentation produce you'll have no expression so let's take an example where we cross two white flowers now since they are white there is no pigmentation that means one of the gene is in homozygous recessive condition so when we cross them in the f1 generation we are getting all purple flower okay and this is the genotype capital a small a capital b small b at least one copy of both the genes should be in dominant condition to give you the purple color now when you self fertilize this in the f1 generation this is the outcome in f2 generation what are the gametes we get capital a capital b capital a small b small a capital b small b small b so let's make punnett square and this is what we get as i said we should have at least one copy of both the genes in dominant condition so so wherever you see the homozygous recessive condition of either of the gene you will not see pigmentation say for example over here small b small b small b small b small a small a you know all these places you will see here in this case both the genes are in homozygous recessive condition so all these would not be able to give you the pigment and everywhere else if you want one dominant copy of the gene is enough to give you the purple pigmentation so this is called as duplicate recessive epistasis it depends on both the genes you know either of them is in homozygous recessive condition we will not have the pigmentation and the f2 ratio is going to be 9 is to 7 9 purple and 7 white flower so that's all that's all about dominant and recessive epistasis so remember in case of dominant epistasis the epistatic gene should be in homozygous or heterozygous dominant condition if it is so it will not allow the hypostatic gene to express no matter what is the genotype of hypostatic gene in case of recessive epistasis if your epistatic gene is in recessive condition homozygous recessive condition it will not allow the hypostatic gene to be expressed again no matter what is the genotype of hypostatic gene so that's all that's all about epistasis i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning